Welcome to this special edition of All in the Field. We're streaming to you on AWS On Air. And Karen, don't you think it's a little ironic that we're talking about water on AWS On Air? I don't know, at reInvent, we're all walking so much that we have to stay hydrated? <laughs> yeah. And it is vitally important, not just for humans, but for agriculture as well. And we've seen the devastating impact water can have, whether that be the massive flooding that we saw in Europe this year, or the drought that we've seen throughout the United States, Canada, and Australia. And as we think about a changing climate, we know we're gonna have to think about water differently. And what better way to think about water differently than by using a cloud? Interesting tie into cloud. What I can tell you is that our special guest today, Netafim, has all sorts of different innovative use cases. Things like water management on farms, 360 degree zero waste solutions, revolutionary processes and drip irrigation, and much, much more. I can't wait to hear about their sustainable solutions. We all know that sustainability is really important at AWS, but we're taking that a step further. Take, for example, the US West region, where we've partnered with the city of Umatilla in order to take that water that we're using for cooling our data centers and repurpose it back for irrigation for local farmers. So stick around for some sustainable insights on this special edition of All in the Field. AWS and Agriculture. Hi, I'm Dr. Karen Hildebrand, and I am joined today by John Marciniak out of Chicago. He works with our agricultural customers in the Midwest. So John, does that make you a Sox or a Cubs fan? <laughs> it's a little bit of a sore subject. My blue suit is probably a tell that I'm a Cubs fan. Uh, with that said, it is nice to be here with an actual consistent winner, Karen, who is a fourth generation farmer and the head of solution architecture for our worldwide agriculture industry here at AWS. Now I'm kind of curious who has a worse record, my college softball team or whether the Cubs do. I don't know. <laughs> it's questionable, right? It's questionable. <laughs> <laughs> but I am excited as a fourth generation farmer to share my passion about agriculture. And this is a great opportunity for us to see the types of technologies that farmers are able to implement in the food that's grown, that's producing all of the good things that we get to eat and drink every day. So I'm excited to have uh, on our show today, John Farner, who is the Chief Sustainability Officer of Netafine. Absolutely, and I can't think of a more perfect guest to highlight the role that digital technology plays in water management. At AWS, we often say that there's no compression algorithm for experience, and that really speaks to the volume and the scale at which our customers are solving problems for. For example, with Netafim, they have over a billion dollars in sales, they have 5,000 employees, and they have 17 plants that are manufacturing drip irrigation. That's right, and Netafim's purpose is to grow more with less, which is incredibly relevant these days with the global population increase and the water scarcity with climate change. Netafim has a product called NetBeat, which is coined as the world's first irrigation system with a brain. And that's a great solution, and we are all about solutions here at AWS, so let's welcome John to the set today. Thank you, Karen. Good to see you. Appreciate you it. Elbow up there, John. Go. Good to see you. Nice to see Thanks you. for having me. Appreciate it. Have a seat. And I'm super glad this isn't a podcast because there's two Johns today. Well, we're the only two Johns in the world. So For we're sure. both here right now. So it's, you should feel honored to have both of us here with you today, Karen. <laughs> Absolutely. Then I'd be asking questions that only two Johns are <laughs> Exactly. It's going to be great. Exactly. Um, so I'm really excited. I know to have you here today is really meaningful for me because I get to see your products often when I'm viewing other farms and I'm visiting other customers who have installations as they're solving for their irrigation problems, whether that be in vineyards or in orchards or even most recently when I was actually out at a dairy. So I'm excited to learn a, bit, a little bit more, but also share that with the broader audience. So John, why don't we start off with just a 60 second overview of what Netafim does? Well, again, thank you for having me here today. And Karen, I hope you're enjoying a glass of wine while you're looking at the type of irrigation of these vineyards. You know Otherwise, you're a complete nerd. <laughs> so just look at the irrigation while you're at a gorgeous vineyard while not drinking wine. So uh, thank you for the question. Uh, as you mentioned, Netafim is a global company, primarily focused on manufacturing drip-based solutions to solve a lot of the worldwide challenges focusing on agriculture specifically. Uh, we are an Israeli-based company founded on a kibbutz and Kibbutz Hatzarim, located on a desert in the middle of Israel. And so in 1965, the mid-60s, with the kibbutzim highly focused on agronomy, on agriculture to survive, 
they needed a new solution to irrigate their crops. Drip irrigation was literally born on that kibbutz. And with 70% of the fresh water globally going to agriculture today, we are in sore need of new technologies, building upon the drip irrigation technology that was founded 55 years ago. Absolutely. And it's so interesting because we know that water is so critical to every aspect of agriculture. And we know that drip irrigation is used in so many of those applications. But you were talking about sustainability with us as we prep for this show, not just about water management, but how you're thinking about even recycling the material that's used in the drip irrigation. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Because that was fascinating. Yeah, I appreciate the question. We're very excited about that. And we provide, we, we'd like to manufacture for end of life. We're in the business of plastics. And we like to say plastics are not the problem, plastic waste is a problem. So with the amount of plastics we manufacture on a daily basis, we need a solution that, do not, that, that plastic does not end up in a landfill or is burned in a, in a field. We want to be a solution, not a problem, facing our global challenges related to climate. So in the United States, actually, we have a fully owned and run recycling facility just south of Fresno off of 90, the 99. Driving south out of Fresno, left-hand side, you can see our recycling facility right there where we collect our product from the fields, bring it to that recycling facility, break it down to the material, and then bring it right back up to our manufacturing plant in Fresno, California to put back into our products. And John, I think that context is really important because it, it shows the, the impact that an irrigation product can have. And when, when you think of preci precision irrigation and how it's applied to water and the nutrients and, and you know, how it can change the yield of the quality of the crop. So with that said, can you tell us a little bit about how water in the right time and the right places can help impact the overall agriculture product? Sure, absolutely. When people think about irrigation, this isn't just about water. It's about precisely applying resources to help the crop grow efficiently, to increase your yield based on the amount of, of inputs used, whether it's nitrogen, fertilizer, chemicals, whatever it is with water. So through drip irrigation, precision irrigation, we are applying exactly what the plant needs at the right place at the right time to make sure that that crop is healthy and you're increasing the yield, which is successful for the farmer at the same time, based on those inputs used. I think that's really exciting because when you think about what we are growing around the world, there's all different types of crops that we are really trying to improve the yields and, and understand what the, what the overall growing patterns could be and how that can change, especially in a changing climate. I think we're showing on screen right now some avocados being irrigated in Chile. Uh, and I think that's pretty cool. As the global chief sustainability officer, what do you see that Netafim is able to do in helping farmers around the world and perhaps how you've been able to expand the thought process around drip irrigation globally? Sure. I want some avocado toast all of a sudden. That sounds really <laughs> good to me. Uh, yeah, we are challenging the way agriculture is done globally right now. With, like I said, 70% of fresh water globally is used for agriculture. However, we are irrigating based on technology and practices that are thousands, thousands of years old which is mind blowing. Here you have AWS, a global technology company, innovating solutions, and yet we are irrigating using solutions from the 500s, 600s. So let's take a crop like rice, for example, paddy fields, okay? So basically you're flooding rice fields globally. Greenhouse gas emissions, methane emissions from paddies are more than the airline industry globally, okay? So what can we do to alleviate that? What is the solution we can provide from AWS or a company like Netafim, we can grow that under drip irrigation that reduces that methane emission to nearly zero. Wow. Nearly zero. And while the majority population globally relies on rice for sustenance. Exactly. So you're, you're, you're addressing global hunger as well at that point. Yeah, one of the four main crops. That's really impressive. Right. Now let's dive a little bit more deeply into the Netafim NetBeats architecture. Netafim has decided to use AWS IoT Core in order to move the data from the field through to their central controlling unit. Their central controlling unit then uses cellular connectivity in order to move that data to the cloud. Amazon Kinesis receives that queued data and determines based on the type of data that it's receiving how that data is sharded. That can be whether the actual valve is needing controlling or a log of an irrigation event happening. 
the data moves into Amazon S3, which is common for data lake strategies, and then uses Amazon's purpose-built databases depending on what that data is used for, including Amazon Redshift for structured queryable data and using Amazon RDS in order to create that digital twin and understanding what was the deployment in the device shadow for each of the IoT devices that's deployed in the field itself. In order to make that end user farmer application, they use Amazon Open Search Service and deploy the application using Elastic Beanstalk. That's a common architectural pattern to enable an end user interface. The farmer is then able to understand in real time what were the irrigation events that were happening and the context around the actual field in which was being irrigated. But of course, that architectural pattern that was outlined has some updates based on the feedback that our agricultural customers have provided. And we have now released services that address some of that undifferentiated heavy lifting, making it easier for agricultural customers to build. That includes device and fleet management using AWS IoT Core Fleet Management. That enables customers to understand the certificates that are deployed on each of the devices and helps them to manage a broad fleet that may be distributed globally. And as an accompaniment to that, Amazon SageMaker Edge Manager has also taken away that undifferentiated heavy lifting of understanding your machine learning models that are deployed at the edge. Often customers want to have multiple models running in parallel and understand which is performing best given the current environmental conditions. And using Amazon SageMaker Edge Manager, a user can now define what is the winning criteria and enable that model to be the model that performs inference going forward. That's a real game changer for your AI and ML engineers or your data scientists, certainly speaking from experience there. And as we talk about agriculture, we know connectivity is a constant challenge. And so we are looking for ways to solve that consistently. And that's why I could talk for days probably specifically about connectivity. But we've seen AWS solutions around CubeSats. We have uh, 5G private networks as an area of investigation and continued expansion globally. You've even seen Amazon's investment in Project Kuiper. But specific to this architecture, using LoRaWAN is a common pattern in agriculture. So AWS IoT Core for LoRaWAN, which was announced at last year's reInvent, has been a game changer and removes that undifferentiated lifting of the network server. Being able to build more quickly and use the LoRaWAN protocol, which allows for connectivity of small packet sensor data for up to 10 kilometers, being forwarded to potentially a cellular Wi-Fi connectivity pattern after that. This is a real lift for our agricultural customers and an area in which AWS IoT Core is often selected. Now let's dive back into our conversation with John. Uh, so I'd love to hear a little bit more about your revolutionary work with Dairy Effluent. So I have a question for you. Do you want to talk about poop for a little bit? Because I'm prepared to do that. <laughs> Does that yeah, sound absolutely. good? Absolutely. Let's okay. transition to poop. Okay, stories. great. So we are very excited at NetFM that we have a full 360 degree solution to, to have effluent management on dairies. So basically what we do is you take the effluent right in a pond. And you go and you filter it, you mix it with water and nutrients, whatever the crop needs, and you apply that to the feed for the livestock, for the cows themselves. You grow the livestock in an efficient way through drip irrigation. The cows, the livestock, then eats that yield for sustenance and then produces more effluent. And it all goes through the cycle again. So not only are we creating a solution now to use that effluent as nutrients for that crop, we're doing so efficiently in a way that we're reducing greenhouse gas emissions at the same time and using a natural resource in an efficient way without disposing of it that can, that can hinder water quality, for example. And I'd really like you to tell us more because this closed loop poop processing. Oh, yeah. can I steal that? I want to go to our marketing team right now and closed loop, closed loop poop processing sounds fantastic. You can have it. So thank you. you I'm not paying it. you anything for that. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you know, we often see this in, in what we call regenerative agriculture practices. A tough word, isn't it? It is, regenerative, regenerative agriculture yes. practices. And instead of using that kind of a buzz term type word, it's nice to actually make it real. You know, talk about what it means and why it's more sustainable for dairy farmers. Yeah, so biodiversity, of course, is very important. And regenerative agriculture, which is a very difficult word to say. I wish they would change that word, but regenerative agriculture. So that's all about looking at all aspects of crop management and agriculture management, from soil health, very important, crop health, uh, your greenhouse gas emissions, everything included with your, it's, sustainability is just a component of it, right? This all works in tandem together, it works together. And so, yeah, so that's actually a very important component of what we're doing, not only in dairy, but our future crops we're looking at as well, and providing these kinds of solutions to farmers to be more of a, embracing regenerative agriculture practices. I think that's really cool because it's really important to talk about sustainability in real impactful ways, not kind of hand wavy or greenwashing. And you really bring that home. And we've talked about a number of different ways in which drip irrigation can be used. Maybe one that we haven't talked about is a little bit about greenhouses. Could you tell us a little bit more about what the future of controlled environment ag looks like when you're thinking about sustainability and water resources? Yeah, like I mentioned, we need to innovate solutions for the future. Land, we're not creating more land for agriculture. We're losing land, right, Karen? You know we this. Sure I mean, yes, uh, you know that very well. So we're losing land, we're losing water, we're losing resources in order to meet the needs of a growing population. So population that decreasing, that's increasing. So the demand on agriculture is increasing along with it. So controlled environment, agriculture undercover, is a core component to sustainable agriculture in the future. And our ability to control the amount of water used along with the environment, overall ecosystem within that greenhouse is very important in order to have a safe and reliable food supply for those who need it, addressing you know, our global hunger needs. And John, with Netafine being a multinational customer that spans all sorts of borders and boundaries, uh, servicing over 110 countries, um, that's really a good example of what we call in AWS going global in minutes, you know, being able to span all of the different regions. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, what building NetBeats on AWS has meant for the end customer and their experiences? Sure. You know, the majority of global farming is not done through large corporate farms. It's done through smallholder farming that may have one or two hectares of land globally, right? And then, but they all maybe farm next to each other, right? Because they don't have historically shared resources. So what we're doing at Netafin is providing these kind of solutions along with our digital farming platform to these smallholder farmers in order to share resources, share data, be more successful in their agriculture practices that they may not have had access to before these solutions that Netafin brought to the table. And it's really providing them a solution to be more successful in their farming, with them to make money, while being more uh, regenerative or sustainable in their practices, and providing more food and nourishment to the communities they serve. So while we went global in minutes, almost literally being, you know, since 1965, our technology is not that old. You guys are newer, of course, but we're not that old. We are providing these kinds of solutions that again, challenge the way ag has been done in the past in a sustainable way. And I think that's really key because as a farmer, you only have a few chances to actually make that change or make that impact. And you're taking a big risk by doing different. So having that data available makes a big difference in being able to de-risk that change. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really great transition to kind of thinking about what does the future look like in terms of skill sets that are needed, be that in agriculture, be that the producer themselves, be that working at a company like Netafim. What is that uh, kind of intersection between technology and agricultural skill sets that you see might be really important in the future? I, you need to have a passion for what you do in agriculture. I can see it coming out in both of you today. You have a passion on these kinds of solutions, right? And you look at what agriculture brings to our global society. We need food. We need food. Bottom line. We just do, yeah. right? And we need to grow that in an efficient way where we're not wasting resources. So in order to have that, you have that passion. And we need more of that in agriculture. We also need uh, to really embrace technology. We need more of the people coming in with a technological, back, technological background into agriculture that maybe haven't grown up in agriculture, but are thinking about ag in a different way from a technology mindset and bring in those solutions that may have been used for other purposes and bring it to agriculture. Again, challenge the way it's being done now uh, for solutions in the future. So that's really what we need. We need more of that energy and more passion and more focus on sustainability, sustainable agriculture coming back into to our industry. 
And that's a wrap on this special episode on sustainable solutions in agriculture. If you want to dive more deeply into the technical resources of how this architecture was built, we'd suggest checking out the episode of This Is My Architecture that features Netafim and the NetBeat solution. Customers like Netafim are really inspiring. I mean, being connected to where the food comes from and also puts your cloud skills to good use. It's been a pleasure to uh, co-host this, this episode with you today, Karen. Thanks for co-hosting with me, John. And if you'd like to watch more episodes, check them out on YouTube and on Twitch, or use hashtag all in the field and find John and I on LinkedIn. Be sure to check out more reInvent sessions on AWS On Air. And for all of our agri agriculture industry friends out there, we'll see you at the Agritech Summit in March 2022. And we have some great agricultural customers who are still up presenting on reInvent. Be sure to watch out for announcements on season three of All in the Fields coming next year. And on behalf of all of us at AWS, thank you for your interest in feeding the future. <laughs>